Today I'm going to do a short review of new digital inspection scope. This is for looking in walls and looking in the cylinder heads and so forth to do a visual inspection on areas you normally wouldn't be able to see. I received a package today in the mail that uh, has been opened by Canada Border Service Agency. This seems to be happening more frequently now that uh, we're getting a lot of stuff shipped in these days and I guess they figure that uh, what's coming in is could be contraband and starting to open things up. This is the first package that I've had open but I know other people that have ordered stuff or had stuff sent to them only to find out that their package was uh, snooped upon. So let's see what I was sent that they found so damn interesting that they had to snoop on it. What do we got here? Ooh, it's an inspection camera. Cool. So we're gonna review this little inspection camera today. Comes with a nice case too, I like it. Here it is. Comes with a heavy duty endoscope, basically. This is used for inspecting, looking in walls, looking into your into the cylinder head of your of your engine. Got a couple of attachments with it here. Attachments with a hook, for example. You can put on an attachment with a mirror that would screw onto the front of the camera. We're going to play around with this thing and I'm going to put it through its paces. So let's get this unit up and running. This is a high definition camera from what I understand. Haven't even looked at it yet. But let's, uh, let's set it up and try it out and see how this performs. So to attach the camera, line up the alignment groove with the red dot plug it in and screw it on to turn it on this has got a battery in it so I'm assuming that there is some charge in the battery how do we charge it up here what's in this thing here looks like we can change the cell it uses an 18650 cell which is good let's open it up and uh, take a look at the cell on the bottom here. So unlike some of the less expensive models, this one here just uses a standard 18650 cell, which is uh, easily obtainable. So you can either charge it up in the camera, in the endoscope, or put it into an external charger. If you need to run the thing all day, for example, and the battery goes dead, you can change the battery. Charge port is on the side, over here, and this is also where the micro SD card, which it comes with, lives. So open that up, there's a micro SD card there. Comes with a 32 gig class 10 micro SD card so right out of the box the unit is ready to do some recording and record we will you will see pictures made on this unit once I set it up I'll find some things to look at probably into my attic space and maybe into my furnace okay there's a trigger on the bottom to switch on and off the built-in one watt torch and you can also swivel the handle down to make it a little easier to see what you're doing so this, this light is basically so you can see what you're what you're working on and if I turn it on by long pressing the power button that will turn on the camera which also has its own light as you can see the picture is very clear and it's a high definition picture let's go into the setup is it mode freeze, rotate, okay resolution, okay 
okay. 1920 by 1080. That's our resolution date and time stamp. Turn that on and off. Shutter sound on or off. What else is in here? Auto power off. Five or ten minutes so the battery will not go dead if you forget to turn it off. Language. Obviously to change the language. Date and time. We'll set the date on this. 2020. Oops. 1020. And it's 1656 right now. Do you even set the seconds? Format is to format the memory card that's in the, the unit. It should already be formatted, I would think. And version obviously just gives you the version uh, that one takes a picture that's for taking a snapshot and to record video I'll press the mode button now I'm in video mode so now if I press the button here it will start recording and the camera is upside down so let's go take this and uh, shove it into a wall and see what type of pictures we can get these shots were done in the 1080 mode. The camera can record either 720 or 1080. It's done through the menu. How I showed you to set up the resolution, that was in uh, camera mode. You have to be in video mode to set that up. So my initial shots were actually shot in 720. So I went back and shot this after the fact. I'm just pushing the camera into a crevice in the wall. And we're going to take a look at some of the spaces that you will never see in the house without one of these things. So that's what makes one of these inspection cameras so useful as it lets you see behind things. We're going to look at some plumbing here momentarily. This is way up into my, uh, into my joists for my, for my second floor. camera does record sound so you can document while you're recording you can document what you're seeing At this point, the camera is about four feet into the wall, so I can't even see any light from it. All I can see is what's on the screen. Hmm. You see the autofocus camera is actually focusing. Water pipes. Is that a water pipe? Looks like a water pipe in there. There is a water pipe in there. I can see it. I can't even see the camera right now. It's Pushing through holes in the, in the uh, joist. 
So here's some shots when it was in 720 mode. So I can narrate while I'm doing this. I'm looking up in the attic. Space. We'll Space size this to uh, fill the screen. The ducting. Where my Cat5 wires and stuff are. And I like a smoke detector. Look you how know, clear that picture is. I think if you guys remember the last one I looked at was not this one. It's got an autofocus camera. Let's see if we can get over that joist and go further into the wall. So this is the heat exchanger for my uh, air conditioning HVAC system. Other accessories that come with the camera are the mirror attachment and that would go on I think just by unscrewing the end so what the mechanic does with this is they remove a spark plug and they can put the camera down through the spark plug hole and inspect the condition of the valves. So the the mirror attachment is for inspecting things off to the side of the camera. And it'll work well providing you can get the camera where you want to inspect. I thought it would be kind of cool to look inside the cylinder head of my Harley. The, the problem being is that the camera is larger than the spark plug hole. Now that may not be true for all engines because uh, there are different diameter uh, spark plug holes, but for a Harley it won't fit. Maybe for a lawnmower it would, I don't know. I don't have a socket wrench that's the right size for the spark plug on my generator, so I couldn't. I was going to pull my Briggs & Stratton generator out and uh, pop the spark plug and take a look in that, but unfortunately I can't because it's the wrong size. So that little test was kind of useless. Other attachments that go on here. Oh, and when you press the, repeatedly press the power button, it changes the brightness of the lights. Bright, medium, dim, and out. So you can change the light level for the, the lights for the camera. There's also a hook. Now this one's useful because you can use it for retrieving stuff out of the wall when you're fishing a wall for example you put the hook on now you're ready to retrieve a wire or whatever you want to hook catch it and hook it back 
hooking a pull string, for example, if you're fishing a wall and you've got a, a pull string pushed down through the wall, you can hook it and pull it out through your access hole. This one is magnetic. So this is the one that, this is the non-magnetic. This one here is magnetic. So if you're trying to catch a ball chain, for example, that's what I have been using my other one for, because it has a magnetic attachment, as does this one. But um, a way to fish a wall is you cut the hole at the bottom. Um, I quite often use it for um, fishing power lines for alarm systems. I'm mounting an alarm panel uh, I'm mounting it up on the wall and I've got an outlet that I, I need to get power from the outlet and I've got the outlet directly below so I, I remove the wall plate that, that way I can get in and cut a little uh, access hole beside the, uh, the electrical box on the side opposite the stud right so then directly above it I will cut my access hole and I drop a ball chain down the wall and then I use a magnet to grab the ball chain. Now the, 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 the kits are pretty good. The, 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 the ball chain, the wall fishing kits are pretty good. They come with a flexible magnet like this that you can just go in and grab it. But when you have a camera it's a hell of a lot easier because you can see where that ball chain is. An example as to how strong the magnet is. Say I was trying to fish a ball chain or a tool down that I dropped. I dropped the tool and I'm looking for it. And I can spot it lying down the wall. Screws or something, right? Something that I've dropped down the wall or something I've dropped in behind my bench which I can't get to and it's completely inaccessible but I can get the camera down there and I know it's magnetic. I can go down there with the magnetic attachment and I can grab it and I can bring it back up. So magnetic attachment is it's actually relatively strong. It will pick up a screwdriver. It will pick up, uh, like it will even pick up this screwdriver here, which is actually quite heavy. That's uh, a quick demonstration of the Teslong high definition endoscope inspection camera link to this is in the description and I'm sure that I'm going to have many uses for this camera my other one that I've got is actually in my toolbox in my work truck because I use it at work so this one here may find itself alongside of it see the only downside I can see with this is the, ca the camera itself is actually quite a bit bigger the other one I've got the camera smaller and it can actually fit into a spark plug one of the smaller metric spark plugs this one here is just a little bit too big for that but I think probably for a car engine it probably would fit depending on the size of the spark plugs but most mechanics most don't use these so much looking down the spark plug hole they usually put them down in the manifold to check the condition of valves anyway that's usually what the endoscope is used for is to look for buildup on the back side of intake and exhaust valves that's usually what they do with these things there it is HD 1080p it'll take pictures let's take a snapshot with this thing here put it into uh, where is it that's playback see I can play back I can play back the shots that I took as well so I can record it and I can play it back right on with sound I can play it back right on here oh the, my, my battery just went dead was flashing red there for a while battery went dead anyway we'll look at the files in the video from here anyway thanks for watching link to this is in the description we'll catch you in the next one bye